steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. The breaking of bread, we do that every Wednesday. In fellowship, that's what we are doing now. And in prayers, we also pray here. But I've been talking about the apostles' doctrine uh, for almost three weeks now. Let's take our seats. And uh, I told you that a doctrine is a pattern. A doctrine is what? Is a pattern. A doctrine is a policy. A doctrine is a style. I'm true with the scripture. It says style. The Bible says, and they continued steadfastly. Yeah. And I told us that the apostles gave them a pattern to follow, a style to follow, a policy to live by. Now, when we started, the day we started this, we've seen several patterns. Now, I talked to you on the first day, we talked about commitment to daily Bible study and prayer. You remember? It was a Bible study. That it was a lifestyle for every Christian to have, to be committed to his Bible and to prayers every day. And I'm saying, if you are born again, you do not have a prayer life, you do not, you do not have a personal Bible study life, we should question your salvation. After that, that week, we started talking about a commitment to, um, I think we talked about living as a king and priest. We talked about a commitment of uh, the, the uh, 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 doctrine of no work, no food la last week. The doctrine of one accord. And I also talked about on Wednesday, the doctrine of soul winning. That that's what our duty is as Christians. Now today in this service, you know what we are going to be looking at? We'll be looking at the doctrine of giving now the apostles gave them this doctrine and we shall be talking about the giving life of the church the giving life of a christian i wrote in this first service let's see the doctrine of giving beloved we say that the new covenant church you know started where in acts of the apostles so let's see how their giving life was. Let's see if we are following the standard. Acts chapter 4, verse 33 to 37. That's our main study scripture for today. Acts chapter 4, 33 to 37. I read, And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. As they were witnessing, they were receiving great grace. You want great grace in your life? Get involved in evangelism. You can't experience great grace without evangelism. The more you win souls, the more the grace of God in your life will increase. Verse 34. Now, so, sorry, no, where, where they, sorry, were there anyone among them who lacked for all who were possessors of lands? Follow this reading. Or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the, the things that were sold. Verse 35. They sold their lands, they sold their houses, brought the proceeds, and laid them where? At the apostles' feet. And they distributed to each as anyone had need. 36. We'll stop at 37. And jo 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 Joseph, now his name is Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus. What did he do? Having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, this is the sample of the giving life of the first church. Now, how were they giving? They gave sacrificially. The Bible says those that have that had houses went to sell their house. Those that had lands went to sell their lands. And what did they do with the proceeds? They came to church 
and put those things on the apostles' feet. Amen. They put it at their they put it at the apostles' feet, saying, Apostles, do whatever you want to do with it. Now, I want us to look at something here. I wrote here, they were so possessed with love for God to the point that they gave sacrificially. Can I tell you this truth? It is not those that have that gives. It is those that love God. Giving is not possible without the love of God. I can tell you this truth. Giving can, will never be possible without the love of God. So if you are struggling with your giving, you know what I should tell you? It is not that you don't have what to give. Can I, that's the truth. It is because your love for God is injured. Now, look at what is happening in today's generation. I wrote here, Amen. They even went to the point of selling what they had and laid at the apostles' feet. Just see the standard that was set at the foundation. What is now, what is now wrong with today's believers? Look at this. That they struggle over sight. They even talk against it. And they even talk against first fruit. Some struggle with prophetic offering. In fact, today, giving has become a point of negative discussion. I know, tithing is part of the Old Testament. First fruit should not be followed. Why should I give to God's servant? You know, people are talking today. What is the difference in between today's church and the church that started in Acts of the Apostles? It is the love of God. I come again. It is the love of God that is dying. The Bible says, For God so loved the word he gave. What is the greatest proof of love? Is giving. What is the greatest proof of love? Is sacrifice. That's why if you look at our national anthem, when we read, we talk about the labor of our hero's past. Do you still remember the national anthem? Let's practice it. Everybody be on your feet. Be on your feet. Everybody on your feet. On your feet. You don't sing the national anthem on your seat. Everybody be on your feet. Put your hands where it's supposed to be. Are we set? Keyboard is start for us. But don't be too loud. I want to hear their voices. Yes. Sir, this one. Arise, O compatriot. Let's go down. I will sing with you. I want to hear your voice. Okay. Brother Mike, I didn't hear you. Edith Vijeva. Uh huh. I'm looking at you. Mommy Grace. Okay. Sister Yemi, I did, okay, okay, good. I know you will know it, you are, you are an officer. Okay, clap for yourself, you did very well. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't ask for that one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, if you look at look at the labor of what our heroes passed, why did those men labor to the point that some of them lost their life? It was love for their nation. What is the greatest proof of love? Is sacrifice. You know, today I when people talk about yeah, no, 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 no. I, Cameraman, you are not here. When people talk about, no, 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 tight, tight, tight. I always look at them and laugh. Oh, no, tight is part of the old covenant. I look at them and laugh. You know why I laugh? Abraham is of the old covenant. Abraham was not in the New Testament. But if you go to the book of Romans, the book of Romans kept talking about Abraham as father of it. And who was the first to practice tithing? It was Abraham. I am not paying tithe based on Malachi 3. I pay my tithe based on the encounter 
I studied Abraham's life. And I, for Abraham to be the first man to tithe, I made up my mind I will follow his principles. Listen, giving will be difficult for you if you don't love God. That's why I look at the early church. Now, the church has not even gotten to this point of the early church. We are still at the point of 10%. You are still arguing. Go on Facebook, you see them talking against that. At the point of 10%, let me say, ah, hero, ah, ole ni mo, ah, liba, ah, kosinu maje mui. But look at the point that the church was. They didn't give 10, they gave all. Can you imagine somebody goes home, he's, he puts his house for sale, and people are asking you, what do you want to do with the money? Say, I want to give it to God. You hear online and they say, ah, we have never seen God. Well, uh, 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 to the offering, they say they give it to Is it God that in the, in the New Testament, in the, in the Acts of Apostles, where did they put it? They put it where? At the apostles' feet. So giving is a doctrine in the New Testament church. Say after me, giving. It's a doctrine in the New Testament church. You know what may I call Titan? I call tithing love offering. Yeah, that's what I call it. Love offering. I call it appreciation offering. You have worked for a month. You've done a business transaction. The business was successful. You collected your salary by yourself. If you're a salary earner, and you now say at the end of this month, Lord, I want to thank you that I'm able to collect this money that I worked for. This is one over ten as my portion of appreciation to you. That's what tithe is. Some say, oh, pastor, you don't understand. Fast food is gone and gone forever. Listen. In Proverbs, I read Proverbs about fast food and I was touched. He said, honor the Lord with the fast food. So I call fast food honor offering. Nobody should force you to give it. Fast food is you saying, Lord, from this first business that I've done this year, from this new business, this is my first profit. I'm bringing this to say thank you for my first. So permit me to let you know that giving is a doctrine in the Pentecostal church. I come again. Giving is a doctrine in the Pentecostal church. What is now wrong with today's believers? That struggle over tithe and even talk against it. They talk against false fruit, prophets' offering, and the likes. What is wrong with today's church? Answer number one The love of God is lost. So many people don't love God. And I will tell you as I go on. Now let's go to the life of Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3, 3 to 4. Now let's look at. What the love of God prompted him to do. First Kings chapter 3 from verse 3 to verse 4. First Kings 3, 3 to 4. First Kings 3, 3 to 4. Look at this. The Bible says, And Solomon did what? Loved the Lord. Look at the foundation. Walking in the status of his father, David, except that he sacrificed and burnt incense at the high places. But look at verse 4. Because Solomon loved the Lord, now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. Solomon did what? Offered a thousand burnt offering on that altar. Pick it from verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord. Now because he loved the Lord, he came to sacrifice to God a thousand burnt offering. It is love for God that prompts us to give to God. I come again. Love for God is what prompts us to give to God. Please don't let me forget. I remember now. I think this coming Sunday is the last Sunday. Our publicity is this week. Let's not forget. This uh, Saturday. Is it Friday? Oh, okay. I will still remind you at the second service. And let's not forget the our our uh, uh, um, expenses towards it. Let us please join together and do we'll, your workers. We we'll talk after the service. Praise the Lord. And please, we are. I plan for I will be giving twenty widows rice, raw rice. Remind me after the service. So back to what we are saying. The love of God. 
And Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in the status of his father, David, except that now, because he loved the Lord, he went to Gibeon. What do I give to this God? Oh, I love God. I want to show it. Now, every one of us, I believe that some of you are married here, some of you are engaged. What do you do when you see somebody you love? You give. Now, the man has been coming around you. Abby, see your, see your young sisters. The brother that is always coming around you. Sister Bolu. The brother that is always coming around you. Has been telling you, talking to you, proposing to you. He loves you. And when you now feel that you are getting in love with him, what do you tell him? Okay, I've thought about your proposal. It's like I opened my heart. The next thing, because he too loves you. He wants to ask you, why is your phone bad? He wants to ask you, why have you not made your hair? He wants you to ask you questions. And by the time you say, well, 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 it's not that I'm depending on anybody. Uh, there's something I want, I'm doing. The money is not there. Uh, okay, don't worry. How much will it take to fix your hair? One of the signs of love is giving. One of the proof of love is giving. So if a Christian, if today's Christians are now battling against giving, it shows that it is the love of God that is dying. I wrote here, giving to God springs from the heart of a person filled with love for God. Giving to God springs from the heart of a person filled with love. You know what God said to Abraham? Abraham, stand up. I want your son Isaac as sacrifice. It was a test. God did not need Isaac. That's why God did not allow him to take Isaac. I mean to kill Isaac. But God wanted to test his love level. He wanted to test the love level of Abraham. And Abraham woke up the second day morning, picked his son and was going. Got to the mountain, laid the boy on the, on the wood, took knife. As he wanted to start at the boy, God said, now nah, I know. It's okay. Can you see? Love is a proof. I mean, giving is a proof that you love God. And if you don't love God, you will struggle with everything. Do you think we that pay tight, we don't have need? I'm a tighter too as your pastor. Do you think we that give prophet, I give prophet offering to my fathers. Do you think we that give false fruit, I give false fruit. Do you think we don't have need? There are times that you hold what you want to give like this. Eh? And uh, your need is standing directly opposite. And you are thinking, what do I do? But because you just love God. You know why I give to fathers? I give to them because I don't yet have the capacity to do what they are doing and I want to contribute to it. At their level, they are doing some powerful things that me I cannot do now. I know I will get there. But I want to be able to say in my own little way, I mean, you know, contribute sin, continue alone, on low, on lati she. So the love of God is what is dying. Let's go deeper. Hallelujah. Where am I? Until you are able to grow, hear me, in your love for God, your giving life will not improve. Until you are able to grow in your love for God. I want to say it again. Your giving life will not improve. So if anybody is battling with his giving life and he wants to say, me too, I want to start giving the way people are giving. Go and work on your love for God. If you don't grow in your love for him, your giving life will not grow. If you don't grow in your love for God, your giving life too will not grow. What does it take to grow your love for God? Because you grow it. The love of God does not come as a gift. What does it take to grow your love for God? Answer, deep thought. Thinking, in brackets, about his goodness. Now, a lot of people that are still battling with the love of God is because they don't have deep thought. They don't spend time to think of the mercies they have enjoyed. A songwriter said, When I think of the goodness of Jesus, that's what a songwriter said. 
and all he has done for me. My very soul shall shout hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. In 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 20 to 22. That was what David was thinking. Put it on screen. 1 Samuel chapter 6, 20 to 22. His, his wife didn't know the reason why he gave such a dance. Ah, can you do, 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 do? Could it be protocol? We are Obama Nimi. He danced to the point that he forgot that he was a king. The Bible says he removed his royal robe while he was dancing, and the wife looked from the window and said, "How has my husband despised himself today among slaves? What kind of behavior is this? Why is my husband behaving like this?" Look at the statement of David. I'm waiting for you. First Samuel chapter 6, verse 20 to 22. Yaba Sata. Thank you. And, and the men of... No, sorry. Second Samuel chapter 6. Second Samuel, not second, first. Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 6 from verse 20. Thank you. Then David returned to bless his household. And Miguel, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how good glorious was the king of Israel today uncovering himself today in the eyes of the mates of his servants as one of the base fellow shamelessly uncovers himself now look at his response so David said to Michal it was before the Lord what was he thinking who chose me instead of your father and of his house can you see you don't know what i'm thinking that made me to be to give such a dance you don't know what i'm thinking that made me to give such myself like that ah i was thinking of god that chose me god that chose me instead of your father or any member of your family to appoint me ruler over the people of of, of the lord over israel he said, therefore, I will play music before the Lord. I will play music, verse 22, before the Lord. I will play music before the Lord. Show me verse 22. And I will even be more, what? Undignified. I've not even done anything. The one that I've done that you think I, I is too much, is nothing. I will even do more. And will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maid servants whom you have spoken, listen, by them I'll be held in honor. He said, I will even do more. Can you see? Love for God grows when you have deep thought. When you think you are able to realize the level of goodness God has shown you. I want to ask you, have you actually realized the level of goodness that you are shown? A lot of people don't know. You allow the presence of challenges. I've taught you here before. There is no level in life that there is no challenge. Every promotion introduces you to new challenge. But a consistent thought, thinking over the goodness that you have enjoyed is the reason why, hear me, you remain thankful. Is the reason why you, you, you continue to love God. Ah, this God is too. At times when I sit down, uh, I'll just begin to think, i never see this kind Jesus before. I'll keep telling him, wonder, 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 wonder. When I sit down, I'll just think of a me, me, ordinary me. The man of God that led me to Christ, that taught me the, the ways of salvation. Don't be carried away by the message and you leave your camera. <laughs> you know, that led me to Christ. That taught me what it means to be born again. I was driving. Coming from a function on Friday. Was it Friday? Yes. And his car came in. He is he's living in South Korea. He called me. He said, Prince, it's me. I, yes, sir. I greeted him. He said, I just finished watching your message. And I was so glad that I raised you. I said, sir, you gave me the foundation 
of what I know today. As he was, he said, I just want to pray for you. I, I called you because I want to pray for you. You know, as I was driving, he was praying. As I, as I got to, uh, uh, down and parked, finished praying, I was almost shedding tears. My wife said, why? I said, I never thought that among all the people he trained, I will be the one that God will use like this. You can't realize and grow in God's love if you don't have deep thought. Then we closed as we parked. Somebody was waiting for us. She came for interview as a teacher. She has been calling my wife's number. So we sat her down. As we were interviewing her to talk with her, we now ask her, like, how much do you think we should pay you if we employ you? He said, it's in your hand, sir. It's in your hand, ma. I said, how much were they paying you in your previous school? He said, 12000 It didn't surprise you. That some people are still collecting 12000 naira in a month. I said, what? I didn't hear you. She said, 12000 I said, when? He said, I just left the place. We, we relocated to this area. Uh, not, not in the village, oh. Here, at Olomi, here. I said, we, we won't pay you 12000 No, we don't pay such ridiculous amount. When we told her what we would pay her, she was shocked. I said, under one condition, no, if you do your three days teaching practice and you pass the test, we will retain you. She knelt down. I said, the baby behind you, how old is your baby? She mentioned the, uh, the age. Is the baby not going to school? I said, no. Where is your husband? She didn't have a husband. I said, you know what we do for all our teachers here? They are on, their children are on free education. She went on her knees. I said, you know, as she was going, tears was dropping from my eyes. I now lifted my voice. I said, Lord, bless me more. These are the kind of people I want to train. My wife said, Amen. That's, this has all our teachers, their children are on scholarship. As she was going, you know what I was doing? I said, Lord, so you are good to me. Oh, Tavin Rada Tagan. 12,000. Do you know how much I used to buy data on my phone for my daily broadcast? That money prayer you see me doing every day. I spent above 30,000. And it can't back 12,000. I want to ask you, is God good to you? That's what will make your love for him to... Now, if you think of his goodness, beloved, if you think of his goodness, then you should love him. And if actually you say you love him, there shouldn't be anything you can give to God. Let's go deeper. We don't have all the time. Can I go on? So, deep thinking, that's thinking about his goodness. It's one of the ways. Just like David, he thought about God's goodness. That was why he gave his dance. Let's now go to the second segment of this message. Let's take our time now to look at what the devil used to kill or to steal the love of God from people, believers' hearts. Kiloman pa ife ti ani fun olorun ni o kan ya wa na Let's look at that. Let's look at that. What are the things that kills the love of God in our, from our heart? What are those things? Put those ones in alphabetical order. A. A lot of believers were not properly educated about their relationship with God at the beginning. So they get discouraged when they meet tough time on the way. I come again. A lot of believers were not properly educated about their relationship with God at the beginning. So they get discouraged when they meet tough time on the way. Now this one is very important. Hear me. 
a lot of you, the people that preached to you, told you, eh, sir, you know, come to Jesus, he will make you a wonder. Come to Jesus, he will transform your life. Come to Jesus, you will become a millionaire. Come to Jesus, you will be healed. Come to Jesus, you will become great. That's what they told you. But it is not a complete truth. It is a one-sided truth. I must tell you the truth. That you are born again does not exempt you from the challenges of life. That you are born again does not mean you will not face certain things. Let somebody tell you the truth. So, to the king, what of him? Yeah, my beloved Jesus, on the mass, ah, on mass, I hear that. Ah, and you are you were son. What say? And you, you, you son, I can let you go. What say? On to why you are here? I'm only I want to see what you want. In contention, wow. You must get it right. Come to Jesus. The, the real truth is this. We serve God because he loves us. We are not serving God because we want anything. It's not that you don't have need though. But that's not the main thing. We serve him. We, try, we, we want to love him because he first loves us. He first loves us. That's why I want to say our relationship with God is exactly like Psalm 23. Let's look at it. Psalm 23. This is how relationship with God is. We take all the verses. The Lord is my shepherd. What's that relationship? What's the first thing? I will not lack. Confession. I will not lack. I will not lack his presence. He's my shepherd. Verse 2. This is relationship with God. He makes me to lie down in green pasture where I will be fed. That's church. If you say God is your shepherd, you are born again and you are not a member of a church, you are, there's no place where you are being fed spiritually, you are not born again. He, he leads me, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He will make sure he takes you, he leads you, he puts in your heart, go to church, hear the word of God so that you can be fed. He leads me beside the still waters. He's still talking about the word of God. This one is not talking about miracles now. He's still talking about the word. He makes me, okay, we've taken this, show me verse 3. This is how the relationship with God is. Verse 3. He restores my soul. The joy of salvation is restored. You know, there's this joy you have when you are serving God. And you are serving him genuinely. Even when there's no food, you are happy. There's this joy you have when you are serving, you know. I remember when I gave my life to Christ, I became born again. I went to my house. Nobody told me. All my walls, you, you won't see the paint. Because I love wrestling so much. So all the, the posters, Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man, you know, Hulk Hogan, British Brew Dog. All their posters, Red Heart, they're no longer popular today. Hitman. All of them fooled my wall. I just went and I was removing it, and I was removing it, and I was removing it. There was this joy that was restored in my heart. I went to set them on fire. There's this cassette. I couldn't sleep without those, that case at that time. I took it to, I took that case. I went to, I think, took it to uh, these uh, DJ people. They helped me select, select blues song. So when I want to sleep at night, those days, as a young boy, I'll put it down. Play it in my case. C90, one hour, 30 minutes. Oh, mama, play very cool. I brought out the cassette, threw it into the fire, replaced it with worship. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I made up my mind. You know what I did? I was going to the house of all my girlfriends, one after the other. Hello, I just had to come and greet you to let you know that I'm born again. You can't be born again and genuinely born again, no, and you are still struggling with sin. One, if I I was going one after the other, telling them, "I'm now born again. I'm now born again. I'm now born again. I'm now." Born. In fact, it got to a point. One of them said, "No, I will not let you go. I will not leave you, because I became born again. She also became born again." Now read on, verse four. Verse four. This is where they did not tell you. This is where some people get to and the love of God die. 
begin to go down. He said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? You know what this one talks about? It talks about persecution. It talks about some things you will face because you don't want to lie. Some things you will face because you don't want your relationship with God to break. It is painful. This is where some people get to. Their love for God begins to diminish. They begin to get tired. You see somebody just lie and made it. I will be looking at your joke. Deal with Moshe. Senator to go to the house. I'm going 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 to go because some of you thought, because at the moment I'm born again, I'll get married. And once I get married, I'll get married to a perfect sister. There is no perfect sister. I'll get married to a perfect brother. There is no perfect bro. That is speaking in tongues does not tell you that he will not be able, he will not, he will not keep malice with you in the marriage. You know, you say we both spoke, spoke in tongues uh, during our courtship. We were always speaking in tongues. Oh God, I love brother, brother J. And brother J will say, I love, I love sister G. Sister G, how are you? Brother J will say, oh, I'm fine. Oh, Rabo, Santa, Yangada. You're always exchanging tongues. A daily no. You are now shocked that you got home. The brother G that was always speaking in tongues in church cannot even pray 10 minutes at home. And you are shocked. The sister J that is always saying hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother G. Now gets home and you are shocked. He said, And you are shocked that is this not sister G? Is this not brother J? Do I walk to the valley of the shadow of death? He said, one thing that should make me not to be afraid. One thing that should maintain my love for God is that I must be sure I came up to this point because my relationship with God is still intact. So that you are born again does not mean you are exempted from challenges. Don't let what you face kill your love for God. Now do you now see that after you must have passed through this realm, you now go to verse 5. Brother you touch brother Ayo. You now go to verse 5. See properly. You prepare a table before me. The table is prepared after you go through the valley. Say after me, Lord, I love you. I didn't hear you. Irrespective of what I face, I love you. Say it boldly. Do you believe in what you are saying? Irrespective of what I face, I still love you. That was what the man was trying to say. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through, I still have joy. After all I've been through. So, a lot of people, they allowed the love, the love they have for God to die because they were lied to at the beginning. They came into Christianity with one mindset. I am going into Christianity to cash crops. Ah, I want to know Christianity. You know, I was studying the scripture and I was touched. Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus. You know, he was, she was there on the day Jesus was to be killed. Can you imagine? Her son was on the cross. They were nailing him. Pa! Pa! And he said, Mother, behold your son. Do you know why? She knew what God was doing at that time. Go read Acts of the Apostles. Even after Jesus died, left, Mary was still in church. So a lot of believers were not properly educated. So I'm ed educating you now. That you are born again does not mean you will not face challenges. You don't allow the challenge you face through Jesus out of your life. I faced my own. I'm still facing some. I serve God as a single. I serve God as married. 
when we're trusting God for fruit of the womb, I was still coming to preach. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in the side of my God is good all the time. To the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good. Even when there was no child in my house, when there was no food in my house, now that there are children in my house, I'm still singing the same song. Why? Because I did not have allow what I want from God to affect my relationship with God. Get to that point in your Christian life. We are looking at why, what the devil capitalized on to kill people's love for God. B. B. A lot of believers allowed the attitude of false prophets and baby ministers to kill their love for God. I come again. A lot of believers allowed the attitude of false prophets and baby ministers to kill their love for God. Listen, some ministers are not fake. They are genuine. The only thing is that they are not yet matured. So in your dealings with them, maybe because of the things, the negative experiences you had, you allowed it. You know, I want to move, but I discovered that the cameraman is writing. So I had to hang myself. You see that I hang my leg like this. <laughs> Those watching online will think uh, it's action. It's not action. I wanted to move, but the camera, if I move, it, it won't move with me. So back to what I'm saying. That's why I say, in your relationship with God, please, don't be looking at people. Everybody is still human, including me, your pastor. We all are in the making. Hello? We are a progress in the hands of God. So a lot of people got discouraged because of that. Ah, Pastor Lagbaja in Pastor Tamedu, the way they handled my case and the way they handled me. So they got discouraged. They allowed it to affect their love for God. We are not serving man. What does the Bible say? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Even if you fall into the hands of false prophets, don't hate God because of it. I have seen people that told me their experience. I will never give to God again. Pastor, pastor, if you see how they cajoled me, took my car, even took my house. And I encourage them to love God again. So don't allow the attitude of any man make you lose focus in God. See, let's look at C. A lot of believers don't know. I'm waiting that they need to protect their love for God by being selective about what they give their attention to. I will come again so you can write down. A lot of believers don't know that they need to protect their love for God by being selective about what they give their attention to. Have you captured it? Should I go on or come again? Okay. A lot of believers don't know that they need to protect their love for God by being selective about what they give their attention to. Please, while I explain, open Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 21. Hello, brothers and sisters. Please don't just give your attention to every rubbish. Somebody put a caption and said, listen, Pastor Adebo is fake. I, just, I want to know, I want to know, I want to know what the person has to say. Listen, there are certain things, if you hear them, it will, it will reduce your love for God. Don't bother trying to listen. Look at what this Bible says. He said, also, do not take to heart everything people say. We'll go back to old Kenyans after reading this. Least you will hear your servants cursing you. Show me the old King James. I love the way that one puts it. Old King James. I'm waiting. Thank you. He said, also take no heed unto all words. Can you see? That are spoken. Least thou hear thy servant. Some of you want. Can you not? Anyone saw me? Can or not? There are certain things I, 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 I always, me, I don't like listening to. I don't like listening to. 
there are times some people just come around me, Papa, I walk back in it. Once I see their caption, I delete. Do you know why? I want to protect my love for God. Somebody is saying, eh, ah, see, the reason he wrote, reason why I say there is no God. Caption. I won't read it. Because me, I know that there is God. There's a possibility I may read the person's story and not know what actually happened on the person's part. And begin to conclude to say, ah, and that person has point to. There was one blogger like that. I followed her story. She was speaking against Redeem, speaking against Pastor Adeboe. Her husband was a pastor with Redeem. How her husband was maltreated. How her husband died after her husband's death. How the church did not visit her. How, how she was just saying, oh. Do you know that I listened to it to a point? I started to have a little kind of hatred. Ah, instantly I stopped. The next part I said, No. Because I said, No. She won't say what they did. She will say what was done to her. Abby? Yes. And all she was saying, who knows the truth? And moreover, I, let's also say, we all are growing. There's no perfect organization anywhere. How will a young mechanic know how to do a repair car? Is it not by spoiling other people's car? To buy uh, uh, a pipe will break. To look at a bit of fuel. But boy, you have to buy a fuel pump. And you have to buy a next time. You have to buy a How will a pastor know how to pastor well if he does not make mistakes with managing people? Yeah, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. You think we don't regret? I also regret to that. But I won't come back to tell you that. I'm sorry. You, I will just take it as a lesson. If it is before, when people leave our church, you hear it in our message now. But all the people that have left, have you ever heard me say indirectly or directly? You know why? I discovered that 99% of the people that left our church are still watching our messages. It's only that they will not watch it at the time that the thing we pick them that they are watching it. Are you learning something? So your 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 love for God needs protection. I don't say stop opening your ears to all the the junks being spoken on the internet. One came up, he said, eh, 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 my pastor, my pastor had that I wanted to buy a car. Eh, I had 13 million and my pastor borrowed it. After I borrowed the money, he didn't give me back the money. I reported to Jill, Jill, and they started castigating the senior pastor. You don't know what went behind. Protect your love for God. I wrote it down this way. Once you hear a negative caption about a believer or popular servants of God, don't quickly subscribe. Stop it if you do not want your love for God to be attacked. Open up to testimonies. Okay, I'll come to this, summarize with that. Now, if you don't want your love for God to be attacked, we went for a meeting with my mentor, some, uh, that was last month, and somebody raised a question. He said, sir, what do you have to say about Pastor Shiju, Ilu, your Madi, that Pastor Adebwe said they should hand over the branch of the church and return to their quarters. Sir, what do you have to say about it? You know what my mentor said? He said, is this redeemed Christian Church of God? I don't know you, the pastor that asked this question because they wrote the question. But let us stop interfering in the internal matters, internal crisis of other people's church. Leave them with their crisis. I learned a big lesson. Some of you allow your love for God to die when you hear things like this. Sherry wa alat internet ti dasile. One man of God came up. 
it was Evander quickly sent it to me. Sir, it's what he's doing. He said, instead of giving your tithe to God in church, go and give it to the poor. Remember that? And he's quickly saying, is it right? I said, see, there is a portion. There's sacrifice to the poor. It's different from your tithe. If you are giving to the poor, you give to the poor so that you not become poor. If you are giving your tithe, your tithe is your, your uh, thanksgiving offering of saying, Lord, I worked for 30 days. I collected my money. This is 1% of sin, 10% of saying, thank you. Say here. So protect your love for God. Let's summarize by saying, open up to the testimonies and events that will increase your love for God. There are things you listen to. Was it not on, uh, when did we have wedding in our church this week? Was it Thursday? As the woman was being brought by her father-to-be, uh, her, uh, her, her father's brother, because her own father died, she was putting on white wedding gown. As she was coming in, I held myself from crying. Do you know why? It was 20 years ago her husband died. Nobody expected anything from her again. The man she got married to on, on, on Thursday was there when they gave birth to her. The man she got married to was the man that in charge of the burial ceremony of her father when her father died. But they didn't know themselves. In fact, it was when they came to me, when the man, and how did she, did God do the thing? After this man of God's wife died, because people know that God has blessed him, and he's a good man, servants of God began to pray different places. Uluwa, Uluwa, they were praying that God should give him a wife. She, on her own part, had a friend. She wanted to go and visit. She went to visit the friend. The friend now said, Ejekajo Dodo, they went to the pastor's place. The pastor was organizing a prayer. Not the pastor who swiped died, though. The pastor now announced that, Hey, Joe, you know, she alone can watch here who wants to cook. You ain't about one bit here, local boy, you're going to cook. Ewa Rimile, you see. She didn't go. She sat down quietly because she knew the pastor. She only came to eat with her friend. But after the service, the pastor went to her and said, Mommy, Joe, my binuma. Moshi raised announcements here, Leco, and he looked commiss of picking so full. I said, No, no, I have been on Shilun Combe. I'll go and tell my pastor. She now came, we sat here, and she told me, I said, Too bad, Jackin, continue your long face, Shane. Ma, I take a jack your long, she shall wear. She mentions of no mentions of. She had to be Rara. He said, they said, they will go and tell the man that they have seen a wife for him. I will rush. Follow me. As they went to tell the man, the man of God, that we've seen somebody for you. He said, the man of God said, can I see her? So they brought the, the man of God to our house. They were talking and talking and asking questions and asking Omo The man burst into tears. Well, we. At the point of prayer, point of prayer, point of prayer, point of prayer was when the man confirmed, she confirmed, they came to me, I gave my approval, I now told them, go see family members. As they got to the father's junior brother, he is the pastor of, uh, uh, the prophet in charge of us, uh, um, uh, Ikoi Mountain. He saw him, sir. Ah, he, he greeted the man of God. They are friends. And he was saying, the man of God said, Mutiberia, Mutiberia, Ubenikon, and Churchiwa, Okwetiku, School Meji Luni. He ain't in Timuari in for a gen saw. Luba Wink. Ah, 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 bro. Eh, oh, my bro, Baba Miri. You bulletiri, right? Bulletiri. Oh, sorrow. He was saying, Mutiberia will say, Eh, Mark Penny and say, 
Ten Shalaye. If you were here, you see how two of them were joking on Friday. He now explained. How come? Oh, money. Oh, money. Just like joke, like joke, they embrace themselves. So, my father, but my love me. These are testimonies that will make your love for God. That you know that God didn't forget you. The man said, I'm ready to do anything. They went to registry. It was after registry. They came here. Then the father's junior brother said, I will not just let you go like that. We are going to put up a very big party for you. You can't hear things like this. And your love for God, for God will not jack up. Stop opening your ears to rubbish. That will make you to be thinking that, you know, that God is not good. God is good though. God is good. When the man took her to his children, all his children, one is a medical doctor, one, they are scattered all abroad. Two medical, doc, two medical doctors, one nurse, a teacher, like that. The children gathered together and sat her down and asked her, what kind of business do you want to do? You are not getting married to our daddy. We are the one you are getting married to. We will establish you. That since our mother died, we have been rotating somebody will go and sleep there and cook the other one will go and sleep and cook he said we are tired just tell us what you want to do then he asked her do you want to give back to any child she came to ask me I asked her do you want she said no tell them she, they said no they said, if you give back to a child it's for us is God good so why should you now be struggling over giving him anything? What have I just shown you? I've shown you the early church. They gave how? Sacrificially. And I told you that the gateway to a heart of giving is love for God. If you are still struggling with your tithing, it's your love for God that is injured. If you are struggling with giving to God, it's your love for God that is injured. And to heal your love for God, I've told you. Deep thought on his goodness. I love. Let's be on your feet. You love. I love. You love. Let's be on our feet. We are going up. I love. View Lord, yes, I love you, Lord. You are good. Father, we thank you again for what we've heard. Thank you for the seed of the word planted in our hearts. Help us, O God, that this word will bear fruit in our lives in the name of Jesus. Our love for you is ignited, and our giving life will show it. Thank you, Father. Thank all the glory, Lord. As we go into this new week, we declare the week blessed for our sake. Father, go into it ahead of us. Remove evils from the way. Thank you, Father, for good things will locate us this week in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace and fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our confession, I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. 2023. Uh, 2024, sorry. Harvest time. 2024. My harvest time. 2024. My harvest time. May 2024. 